What do we have here? What's up guys? Uh, man, I got some stuff. Do you hear that? It's an ice cream truck, but it's like that creepy... Anyway, sounds like uh, a molest van is coming down my road. <clears throat> anyway, here's my uh, Escape. Bought it for 570 something bucks. Uh, the interior was mint, but like really dirty. Spent some money to put that in, fixed a few things. Moving on. I'm setting up the camera here, gonna do something there. Pretty much already started filming it, but I figured I'd do an intro. What I'm doing today is will a 1964 to 65 rally pack fit into our trucks? If you guys watch my videos, you probably spotted that I already have one, but it was kind of a dummy. Um, clock didn't work. I attempted to get the gauge to work by replacing it with a similar one, but it worked for like a hot second and quit. But hey, that's, you know, trying stuff. Budget, man, I always try to do budget. So will it fit in there? How do you wire it up? Because you don't have Mustang wire and harness. And I believe Mustang wire and harness has had like plugins for it and stuff. So I figured it out, uh, mapped it up. So I'm gonna share my knowledge here. Uh, remove it and then talk about the wiring and then install the new one and try to give you guys a run of the mill. This also could be helpful for people with Mustangs because I looked up some videos thinking it'd be easy to tell me what it was. Came with directions, no. Uh, was, I mean, it was a little vague. So I'm gonna help that out and uh, talk about it and help out people that are interested in that. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So let's, let's get into it. All right. Always cut away. Thing of beauty. <laughs> awesome. This is a 1964 to 65 Ford Mustang rally pack. And if you guys do know, the normal rally packs, uh, at least in the 64, 65 area there, they only go up to 6,000 RPMs. And if you guys can tell, this one goes to eight. And obviously, yeah, you know, the RPMs are, are measured out of hundreds. So, yeah, I've found one that has 8,000. So it goes to 8,000. If you guys also notice, too, it doesn't say rally pack. So, uh, is your question that I don't have a rally pack? This is a fake rally pack? No, it is. It's, it's a real one. It's a real reproduction, anyway. It says Ford right there. And so... <laughs> The only thing that I don't like about it is, is that these are not uh, polished or chrome or whatever you want to call it. Now the one I have that doesn't work has it, they're, they're not painted like this. So I'm thinking about swapping those out. And also, I don't know if you can tell in this camera, but this has actually been 3D printed, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has. So there's, there's that. To be continued.
is a Ford licensed product. And yeah, right up top there is the part number if you guys want it. So it says eight cylinder. I assume the straight sixes are different. Maybe the ones for straight six, I have no idea. I'm not sure why I'd have a rally pack on straight six, but hey. So yes, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to swap these out for the chrome ones or the polished ones. But there's more. It comes with, well, this one. I don't know if they all come with it, but they come with sort of the extension hardware harness. So that's pretty cool. But the ends are set up for, as far as I can imagine anyway, for OEM setup. So if you're running some different wire harness or something, you might run into some rewiring there, splice some new stuff. Looks like some of the pictures are of the later year. So I assume the insulation is the same on the ones that come on the later years. So that's cool. Has how to hook it up to your ignition. See, this is all for Mustang and I'm putting it on my F100. So I wonder how close it's gonna be. Back then they did a lot of similar stuff, so. Cool. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the other one, show the uninstall. It doesn't really, not that hard. It's two bolts right here uh, and some wires. And then I'm going to probably swap these out, which I don't know if this comes with a warranty or not, but that's probably what I'm gonna do next. And then from there, probably going to do a video of installing it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get to work. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I guess I'm gonna remove this and then I'm gonna remove the dash so that I can get access. I don't think you have to do that. I'm going to because, well, this isn't a Mustang, so installing a rally pack on this, um, I'm hoping not to really splice anything. I, I have at least one connector from looking at the schematic or whatever, the diagram that I might have to splice into something. So we shall see. Removing your steering wheel, 15 sixteenths. And no, it's not that easy. First time taking it off. I've taken this off many times. You know, I'm thinking about finding a way to have a quick release for this as well because I like having my stock steering wheel driving around but if I find myself wanting to kind of race around a little bit you know after I do all the stuff I want to do the suspension future videos it'd be cool to kind of like quick disconnect this so so I'm gonna be removing this tack right so when I installed this tack I ran the wires underneath this whatever cover uh, along with this bracket. So I'm gonna remove the bracket so that I can drop the column down a little bit and pull the wires out so I can run the wires off the new rally pack. They're half inch. Remove your little cap. So now, so now I'm going to go inside and remove these because I want the chrome ones even though they're not or polished whatever these are even though they're not really that nice I kind of like them better cool so I'm going to remove these a, a little history on this when I found it I pieced it together right and this is actually a Tupperware plastic that I used as lenses it's sort of weird you can buy one of these for like 300 bucks right but if you piece everything together, if you buy the tack separate, the clock, this plastic piece, uh, you know, the wiring harness, um, the glass or whatever it was that goes in here, it, each thing is like almost as much as 300 bucks. Like the tack by itself was $300 if I was gonna buy it new. You know, this was, I don't remember how much, a lot of money. Like the glass was a lot of money. Like I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll just buy the whole kit. So that's why I waited and just sort of put this together. But yeah. Did pretty good though. I mean, this tag, if it worked, was pretty close to the original one, except this is 8,000 RPM, which 
I got one of these reproductions for uh, you know at, at 8,000 RPM, so it's cool. I don't know. I might uh, see if I can't fix this and get it going again. Hmm. So to remove these right here to get to like if you need to get to the lenses or you want to take these off there's two screws in the back here so you've got the gauge out and there are three screws holding the bezel onto the gauge housing on the new one I notice everything by first glance is Phillips I'm pretty proud of these. These are uh, Tupperware. <laughs> like they're a little foggy, but it kind of went with like, you know, the used affordable theme of my truck. I don't see any type of rally packs being used on F100s or trucks of any kind. F100s or 250s, 350s. I don't know. I think it's cool. That's what the inside of the clock looks like, if you guys are wondering. <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think? I think it looks better. I wish you'd polish these up, but nothing else in my truck's polished up, so. I'm sure this voids the warranty of some kind. I don't remember seeing a warranty. This one I gotta be extra careful about. I mean, honestly, it's a good time to check. Like, I noticed this light doesn't work on this one. <laughs> when I put it up to the battery, if it does work, it's like super freaking. Whoa! So I am going to change it out. It's actually a good time to change it out to LEDs too. Some of you guys are probably like, I think it looks good the way it is. I agree. Except that I'm running an F600 gauge cluster. And it has like this sort of flat black along with like random chrome, eh, polished metal areas. So that's why I want to run those. Besides, that's what I had before and I liked it. That looks best. That one. Alrighty, well, let's look at some LEDs. Which ones do I want? I have two different types. So, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I'm gonna run these flat ones. How many do I have? Okay, I have two. There's like a green, blue, whatever sort of cup in there that makes the color the way it is with the normal bulb, so. I don't, I mean, LEDs don't get too hot, but I kind of, I really don't want to melt that. So some of you guys are going to ask, like, why didn't I buy, because they, when you buy them, they do come with the chrome on it, but those didn't come with 8,000 uh, RPM gauges, so, you know. Plus, you guys see my truck, it's not perfect. Kind of makes it imperfect again, which I like. <laughs> well guys, there you go. Testament to the reproduction, um, these are original, I assume these are not, and reproduced, and all of these, I don't know if you guys can see it, but on the housing and on these are these lips, 
you see this little lip right here and they have to line up together so that it <clears throat> lines up flush and they do so that's pretty cool you know if you really think about it so sweet all right guys so here's the unit so i'm gonna put it together i'm gonna talk about the wiring harness here so this is the rally pack here's all the wires coming off the rally pack here's the extension uh, that i mentioned shows you guys the part number on uh, this usually comes with it uh, but sometimes you have to buy this separately and this is all for a mustang 64 to 65. so down here you'll see that there are two uh, separate wire harnesses if you will one comes from the clock and one comes from the tack so from if you if you look on the wiring diagram and i'll, I'll put it up here it's a little vague i had to kind of piece it together um, and then I, I had to run my own little map and i'll put that up to kind of make sense to install it here because I think on the Mustangs you just like take this off the gauge cluster out and then the wires are just there because this was an option so but um, on these you kind of have to uh, it's a little bit different so basically you'll notice that they're two separate uh, wire harness one for the clock and so on you'll have this one I know it's kind of a mess right here well you have a red wire black wire and then you'll have one um, blue with red line. That is the tack, I believe. And then you'll have another one over here where you have a black, a blue with black line, and a blue with red line. So on the extension over here, I'll explain it to this. Black, so this looks like it's the clock. Black goes to black, and black or blue with black line goes to blue with black line. Kind of makes sense, right? And then down here, you have two blue with red lines. And then you have this boot on your extension and if you notice there's two you have three holes but you use each side i got that off the videos uh, that i watched about mustang so i don't know why it matters which one you go into but that's what they did so and that's what they told to do anyway and then over here this is the tack and all you have is red with black uh, so you have a red wire and you have a black wire the red wire goes to red makes sense right so not too hard the black one is your tack well i'm sorry black goes to your Black is your tack wire, and the black goes to your your uh, your coil. So there you go. And then down here, this is what's weird. I don't know why they did this. I'm, I'm guessing why they did this, and I'll explain it here in a sec. Is because they wanted. I don't know why they did this. This doesn't really make sense. So I think this is for your clock. So they wanted a constant off your battery, right? And they have it run off of your door switch. And my guess is is that. Whether you have the car out or not, when you open the door, your dome light comes on. <laughs> Somehow, I guess that's supposed to run the clock the entire time. And then, I guess on some of them, there's this random two-wire setup. And yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't know how to do that in there. I might have to splice this, but we'll see. Then over here, you have makes sense ground, right? And then you have red wire, and you have uh, blue with red line. So, if memory serves, let me look here. So yeah, so black ground, right? And then you've got red, that goes to your ignition. So your key, key ignition. And the, um, I couldn't figure out where the heck this wire goes, right? Um, because, <laughs> I again, this kind of makes sense, I suppose. Um, but this wire here goes to your dim switch. Um, again, in Mustangs, there's a wire harness within the wire harness that, that would run this. So I'd have to have all of this. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I might have to finagle this a bit. But that's basically a really rough look at it. So there, there you go. So I basically got to disconnect all of this because I've got to run these two wire harnesses underneath here uh, on this bracket that holds the uh, column up. So. Here we go. Okay, so when I kind of installed this, or at least reconnected the brackets together, I saw that 
whenever I wrapped it underneath here, this red boot that you guys can see was hitting, uh, was really snugged in there. So I didn't like that, so I actually added extensions on to both of the wires going to the boot. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it, like I said, in between the brackets along the column because there's some space there. And then over the rat's nest. <laughs> and while I was doing that, I was like, hey, uh, why don't I clean this up and not add to the chaos underneath my dash? Um, so I did some zip ties and everything but the wire going to the coil, I zip tied uh, some of that together just to keep it so I at least know when I look underneath there that this well managed rat, rat's nest is my, uh, you know, wire harness, if you will, for the rally pack. So yeah, that's, that's definitely what I'm doing. And then I think once I run that, install this back up, I'm going to let this loose, the rally pack down, and I'm going to remove the F600 gauge cluster uh, just so I can kind of like reach down in there and kind of locate some stuff. So <clears throat> also guys, you always were wondering what this is. It's an F500 F600 gauge cluster. I did a video on it. I put it up somewhere up here. Kind of telling all the information that uh, I knew and was able to find on it. And uh, yeah, so that's what the plan is here. So. So this piece, this is the old one, the piece that holds that on. I don't know if these uh, columns are a little bit wider or what, um, but uh, yeah, you definitely need longer bolts, which I didn't need <clears throat> on the original one. So I don't know if the recasting of this is a little bit narrower or what, or like shorter or something, I don't know. It's also possible when they installed on the uh, Mustang years ago, it just kind of stressed or something. Uh, it's funny I'm doing all this, you know, for this video because I'm going to be removing this out. Um, this, what do you call this? The collar or something like that? Because I have one that doesn't have the shifter in it, but that's after probably, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I can always unbolt this again, kind of let it hang, and then we'll work with the column, you know, or take the column out. So, no big deal on that end. So, future video. Okay, so next. I don't think you have to technically take this out. Um, I, I just hope it would be easier, so we'll see. So all right, I got it installed, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it down. Uh, just I wanna make sure it was fitting all right. So yeah, I think this applies to, because it uses the same bolts, or it uses the same screws for the original ones that came on these trucks, at least in the United States, and the F600. So you have four bolts on the bottom, and then you have four bolts up top here that hold it in. You don't have to mess with the ones here if you have an F600, which you probably already know that, but. What I'm doing right now is unscrewing the uh, speedo cable so this will fall forward a little bit easier, a little bit more. Sweet! Get some lights! So what I'm doing right now is looking up at fortification.com, go to the tech section, and in that section, scroll down, and you go to schematics, and you can look up your year and look at your what wire to do what. I did notice that the one wire, I see one wire that is blue with a red stripe, which is the one that is on this harness, which would be convenient. Um, be cool if they use some of the same you know, stuff. So yeah, hopefully that'll be the case, but I'm gonna double check. Alrighty, what's next is plugging in the, well, I guess you plug in, it's like, do you guys see that? It's like two wires. On the Mustang videos, you plug this into one of the two wires coming off of your door switch, right? Your door light switch. So, I picked one wire, the green on this one, on my truck, it's green and white. Uh, and then, yeah, I ran this little bypass here off of it because... Um, so in Mustangs, the kick panel is removed and then the, the switch is like right there, the wiring is. 
the wiring on our trucks, or at least this truck, is ran like all up in, which is convenient because it's right where it's at, but I had to do a splice. So, rigged up a little thing here, plug that in, and then when I do that, the clock is supposed to work. Heck yeah, it does. You guys see that? Sweet. Okay, cool. So, the test here to make sure you got the right wire, which I did the green. Yeah, green with yellow, can we tell? Green with yellow uh, line, which, you know, after 30, 40 years, could be a white. But green wire, um, you plug it in, and then the test is, is that when you push in, it shuts off the, you know, the light, the dome light, the clock, if it stops working, then you know that you have the wrong wire. Uh, in this case, the green wire is the right one, and the clock keeps working, so. Heck yeah! Alright, next is the tack. So, <laughs> I can't test the lights because I'm doing an engine swap to see if they work on here, and I can't test the RPM to make sure that, that it's hooked up right. But, I followed these generic directions and got it uh, pretty darn close, so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up a wire uh, just to remind myself that that is to the coil. So for, you know, rigging up the RPMs, but everything else is, is hooked up correct. So there you go. So really the only difference uh, when hooking everything up here is that I had to find the constant for the lights, uh, which means that they're only on, uh, you know, when I want to turn on the lights and I assume that that would turn on the lights inside of the foot or inside of the rally pack and so on so everything's hooked up should be good should be good to go I'm gonna do a couple more tests before I start buttoning everything up but there you go so sweet alrighty guys I'll end it here as you guys can tell it's still a mess I want to clean up some stuff first but the answer I really wanted is like how well does it wire into our trucks now Anybody can wire these into our trucks type thing, but I just want to do like least, sort of path of least resistance. And honestly, I think there was only about two spots that needed to be sort of modified, if you will, when it comes to wiring up to our truck. So that was kind of cool. Uh, you know, wiring it into the door switch was kind of weird. And then of course I wired it to uh, basically my dimmer switch, a little bit different than probably you would, but because my dimmer switch, I don't really care if it dims or not, so I put uh, constant key on light to my dash, so that's how I wired up, you know, the uh, rally pack here. So that's pretty much all I wanted to know. The answer is yes, they would do work with our trucks. I uh, haven't really seen this done much, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, if you guys want to see just, I mean, I've had it on my truck for a while, so you guys can see how it looks, but uh, I'm really happy to have a clock working like I'm ever going to look at it, and I'm happy to have an 8,000 RPM, not a 6,000 RPM. Uh, tack in an F100 so out of, uh, it, that's a rally pack so pretty excited for that stuff you guys can find these on auto crafters uh, they're pretty hot commodity so they're hard to find sometimes I don't say hard to find but they're out of stock sometimes so you guys can find those on autocrafters.com and also eBay if you guys can't get it on auto crafters AK 400 world all caps save you guys 10% uh, on a hundred bucks so thanks for watching subscribe if you guys want to see more about this later on uh, and then of course I'm doing that engine swap so a lot a lot to see thanks for watching guys hope you guys enjoyed it see you guys next time